Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. If you are looking for Christmas wreath inspiration, you came to the right place. In this video, you will see my top 15 Christmas wreaths. So today we are going to be using this beautiful Dollar Tree 21 inch mesh and it's five yards like regular rolls at other craft stores are usually 10 yards. So for a dollar, this is really incredible. Okay, um, next thing you are going to need is a wreath form and I was lucky enough to get this uh, neutral one that is going to mesh perfectly and this is the 14 inch as I said. Um, and I am going to use these uh, chenille wires. Mine just happened to be a little on the sparkly side. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is put the chenille wires on our form. There are six sections in this wreath. So what I'm going to do is one is going to go on the two inner rings. On the two outside rings, we are going to put two in each section. So each section is going to have three chenille wires. One in the middle on the front end and two in the back. Okay, you guys, one more time. Each section of my wreath form has three chenille wires. One goes in the middle on the inside two, and then two go on the outside. So three in each section. Now let's get our mesh. I'm working around a cat over here. I don't know if you see this little tail right here. I'm trying to work around a, a little kitty over here. Okay, so I'm going to start together. I just grab it in the middle and then just kind of roll up and then roll down. So you have a nice and even poof. I, I try to even it out for the first one. Okay. You can start outside in, inside out. I kind of work my way from inside to out. But what I'm going to do is I like to secure it with a zip tie, especially the first one. So I have it here, but I'm going to also do it with a zip tie. I do this for the first one and the last one, obviously, because there's no point to do otherwise. When I use zip ties for this, I sleep better at night, I have to admit. All right. So we are making 10 inch loops. I take the beginning and uh, my 10 inch is right here. And I'm just going to grab it where my 10 inch is and I'm going to poof it in kind of, poof it up. And then I'm going to move on to my next one, which is right here and give it two twists, two tight twists. Okay, I'm starting right here. 10 inches once again, poof up going to move to the next one okay I, I made a full circle look how beautiful it is made a full circle and I'm going to continue making my 10 inch poofs what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move on straight to the back and then I'm going to go around the outside continuing with the same 10 inch poofs last poof and it's literally 10 inches <laughs> so i'm going to try to make as little of a tail as possible and that's it so it was enough for the whole wreath to go around there you go and especially because it's so short i will definitely be using my um, zip tie and I'm going to zip tie it to the third ring so 
so it's a little bit on the inside. Oh my, God. oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My cat was on top of everything here. Leo. Leo, my little nosy Leo. So now I'm going to go around and just poof everything out. Just make sure everything is good. Just kind of fill it up a little bit before I start putting the ribbon in. So for the ribbon, I decided to use two types of ribbon and this is going to be this gorgeous buffalo check and also this white one. So what we need to do is we're going to cut these into 12 inch strips. I just like using my ruler and then you can just go back and forth. I really need to do one of those boards that a lot of um, DIYers use, but I really just use my ruler and go for it. You're going to need 18 of each ribbon. Okay, I got all my ribbon and as you see, I am being supervised by Leo over here. Hi, baby. Say hi to everyone on camera. Say hello, my little pretty. I'm surprised all this light and he could not be bothered. He's like, yeah, whatever, ma. So the first thing I do is I make all the ducktails for the ribbon. I have things falling on the floor because of this little tail right here. But I'm going to cut everything up, do all my ribbon, and then I will be right back. Okay, I cut all the ribbon up. And by the way, if you do like to fold like I do, make sure you fold with the bright side inside because when you tie the ribbon, it's going to unfold. So just kind of inside out or whatever you want to call it but here's the outside of the ribbon here's the inside of the ribbon and I fold it in before I cut it okay grabbing one of each and I just I'm just putting them together and I'm going to tie them on each one of the sections just give it a few twists there And I'm going to do this all the way around. So when I do twist, I then pull them back so they're not sticking up because I know I'm done with them. So here too, I'm going to try to twist a few times, just pull them back. And then what I like to do in the back is I just twist it in the back and then just kind of go around until it's nice and secure. Okay, I just did these three and look how clean it is. Clean up here, nice up here, and then I'll open them up and make them all pretty at the end when I'm done with all the ribbons. So I'm just going to go right now all along and put all my ribbon in. Guys, all my ribbon is on and I'm starting to poof it out and what I'm doing is just kind of doing a little crisscross with the red ribbon and the white ribbon I'm just going to go all, all along and do that to all the sides or okay so now I'm just trying to make the ribbon nice and what I do is I have I'll put the white ribbon going one way and then the second ribbon going another way and then just going along and doing the same thing everywhere I'm going to continue and finish up doing this and now we need to get started on our centerpiece i decided to get this peace sign i'm going to give this little board two coats of white chalk paint and this is from crafter's corner from the dollar tree I 
All right, I have my plank, it's nice and dry. The first thing I'm going to do is on whatever the backside is for your plank, grab two more chenille wires, fold them in half, give yourself, a, I kind of just do the, the two finger thing, and that way like I just make it flat. And then I'm going to put it on the side, hot glue it in place. Then I'm going to grab my peace sign and just put it in the middle. And I'm lightly just putting it on top, flipping it. And I'm just going to use the first two to secure it on one side. Don't do it too tight because sometimes I tend to um, do it a little too tight and pull it back. You can always put it, pull it tighter is what I'm saying. And then here's the other side. All right, you guys, I think that's it. I think it looks pretty. I'm just straightening out all the ribbons at this point. And I'm going to hang it up on my front door. Welcome to DIY with Nadia. Today we are making a gorgeous wreath that I found on Etsy for $139.99. And I'm going to make it basically for next to nothing. I have some left over. This is the spring uh, greenery from the Dollar Tree. This is pine cones. This one is from the Dollar Tree and the rest were picked. Um... This is trash to treasure. This, I don't even know how old these little guys are. And then these little bundles I found at Joanne Fabrics. And they were um, $2.99. And I believe I got them either at 80 or 90% off. Um, next, you will recognize this from the Dollar Tree. The ring is from the Dollar Tree. And then the magnolias that I'm using, I got also on a huge discount. I'll throw in a video here. And this is, this was $14.99. And then I got the discount from Michaels. To get started, I'm going to frost up a few things. Since these are frosted, I'm going to put them on the side. Um, I'm going to pick the magnolia leaves because I want to frost them up just a little bit with some uh, sparkles. These I'm going to also frost up just a tiny bit. They are a light green, but I want to just put a little bit of white shimmer on them and just throw glitter on top of that because this is going to be a very elegant wreath. These guys I'm not going to touch, so I'm going to put these on the side. And then these I am going to frost up a little bit also with some paint and then glitter. As you see a little paw over here. <laughs> He's got to be close. I actually like the fact that the paint I'm using is pretty dry. Because I kind of want that effect of just a little bit. I don't want it to be too much. If you're working with fresh paint, I would just kind of brush against something and then on the leaf. Okay, you could do this one of two ways. You can start with the flowers or you could start with the greenery. I decided to start with the flowers and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick the five flowers just like they have five there. And first I want to see if this wreath may be a little bit too small. It just might be. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different but it's okay you know we're making a version of the wreath we're not making the exact same wreath we're making a version of that wreath 
you can always hot glue it later so now we have a beginning now all we have to do is start gluing the leaves the greenery and filling this up now I'm just putting a dab of hot glue and then my gorgeous magnolia is right in there if you feel the leaf is falling a little bit turn it around give it some hot glue on top let it cool and it, you just formed a little bit of a bridge right there just let it cool let it sit there let it cool and that's it your leaf will stand up because I'm limited on these I'm just spreading them throughout because I want to make sure to get some in the middle too okay so this is what we're looking like so far it looks sparse but that's all right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this greenery from the Dollar Tree and it's the fern and it has this white stuff on it and this gorgeous gorgeous sparkle I start just taking it apart because they do have see like these two bundles so I'm going to take those like that and then this fern part separate I'm leaving about a two inch tail right there hot gluing this piece of fern and then I'm going to grab one of these and I'm going to hot glue it right on top and now you're going to start to see the picture of how the wreath is going to look like so once again we're going to get a big piece of fern put it on here whichever way you feel like it needs to go okay now I'm bringing more of these and I'm going to fill up any like naked areas here's a little piece right here I'm going to put it this way I'm just looking behind making sure that it's filled all throughout I don't think I'm going to be using any of these I just don't think I need it I think this is filling up really nicely now I'm just going to put my little pine cones here and there To finish up this wreath, I will be using these pretty little picks from Joanne Fabric and I got these on a huge discount, so not so bad, but originally they were $2.99. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them behind anywhere that I see empty spaces, but I want to put them behind the florals because I feel like the, the space behind the florals is empty so I'm just going straight into the greenery and I'm going on an angle and I'm just going to kind of do the same thing here is my flower and I'm going to insert it around there because um, because of the length of the picks and I'm just inserting them there you go this one went straight and then come out anywhere and I'm just spreading it out where I feel like it would go 
maybe I just want it like that. I don't know. I feel like I want them together. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say that this reef is under $7 with everything that I put in here. So not bad at all. And I'm just going to adjust it here and there. And that's it. I think it turned out absolutely stunning. For this wreath, we are using a metal circle. I'll explain in a second where it came from. Some sort of centerpiece, a wired garland, some wooden beads, a jute twine, and some of this sparkly vase filler. Grabbing this Dollar Tree wired garland and putting it around my circle here. And I used six pieces all together. Now with the wired circle, that is actually the top of a garbage can that's from the Dollar Tree. I used the garbage can in a previous project a while ago and I will insert the video right here so you can see how I used the rest of the garbage can but I kept the rim, I kept the top and this is what I'm doing with the top of the Dollar Tree garbage can. Now for the centerpiece. I'm grabbing some of these wooden beads and these are 14 millimeters each in diameter and at first I put seven on then measured and realized I wanted one more so then I added the eighth bead. The ornament I'm using in the middle of my beads is actually a Dollar Tree ornament that I used in the previous project. Originally it did look like this but I really loved it empty and clean. Now to make sure the tree is going to be centered I'm grabbing a little mini bead and it's bigger than the little uh, hole in the tree and I'm just feeding it through and that's just going to hold my Christmas tree centered without twisting in the middle of my wreath. Now I'm adding the same amount of beads to the right side that I already added to the left. After adjusting it to the height that I want I'm going to attach both of the ends to the metal wreath. To decorate my wreath I'm going to grab these vase fillers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using the gold ones in different sizes and just hot glue them throughout the wreath. At this point you can definitely stop and be done with the wreath and I'll include a picture of what it would look like in a second but I just felt like something needed to be put on the tree so I continued and added a little bit of embellishment to the Christmas tree. To decorate the tree, I'm going to use another piece of wired garland about 4 inches in length and I'm going to put it at the top of the tree. Now if you're wondering why did I do that, there was greenery already on the tree. Yes, but that greenery was a lighter color and it would clash with my garland. This way it matches and it looks really good. I'm just cutting that in the middle, hot gluing the garland pieces to the top of my tree and then on top of that I'm going to hot glue a gold little ball from the vase filler. All the supplies we're going to be using today are from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start with this foam wreath and then a pack of potpourri and also cotton balls. For both of these projects I did use two packs of cotton balls. Now I'm simply hot gluing the cotton balls to the front, the sides and the inside of my foam wreath. Oh. 
Okay, you guys, now that everything is covered, look how gorgeous this is. If I was selling this or this was going on a door with a glass, I would definitely put a white ribbon to cover the green, but it really, look at this. All the sides, I made sure there was no green. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now for this part, I'm going to be taking all of these that kind of look like these curly cues kind of, and I'm going to be breaking them apart because all you really need is this tip to show these little, you know, and then uh, I will be just putting them on and just breaking them because I want to make sure that I have enough. That's why I'm doing that. And I'm just throwing some hot glue right on the edge and it's going in wherever I feel like it needs it. If there's any areas that will kind of like peek through like this, you can either put a little bit more cotton in or whatever you like. See, I decided to stretch this open and I'm just, I have a little half a puff of uh, cotton and I'm just going to insert it right there. And then I will be going on all of these. I'm going to save for later projects all these other looking ones but this is I think this is going to be absolutely stunning all right look how perfect this is to work as a cotton bulb so pretty so cute Okay, you guys, what do you think? So I put a little ribbon right here just to know where I was going to put the original ribbon. And I just noticed that one of my cottons is kind of loose. So I'm going to... Okay. And uh, so I'm going to take this off in a second. But before I do that, I decided to use this burlap ribbon and it does have the wire in it. Let me just take it off the spool because I've used it before. And the bow they have here is pretty simple. So I'm just going to do that simple bow that they have there. And I think that's about right. Um, theirs is kind of flat. I actually really don't like the bow they had, but all right, what can I say? Okay, okay, tail and this and I think what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hot glue these guys together like really, really lightly. Just really, really just to bring them together. Then grab another piece. If you're wondering where I got this pink little thumb, um, this is at the Dollar Tree and they come three for a dollar. There's three in the little pack. And I have these uh, on my table at all times. I absolutely love them. Um, here's a little mistake I made, you guys. I shouldn't have put the uh, hot glue right there because it kind of shows through. You could see the little shadow, but that's all right okay let's get the bow a little bit puffed out i i think this side got a little bit longer but that's okay so if you have where you feel like one side is a little longer than the other one what i do is in the back just bring it together and do a little kind of like a wave 
you don't have to hot glue it in place or anything like that all right so like that and the way they have them are like this coming from the inside out I made this just a tiny bit too short but that's all right that's all right and then here where I have my little blue ribbon that's where I'm going to come in with my little with the rest I guess with the rest of the ribbon and I really don't want it too long so I'm going to cut it off and then I'm just going to hot glue the bow in place. And by the way, for this whole wreath, I actually bought a second pack of these because I thought we I needed a lot more. And you know what? Look at this. This is still left over. Look at all of this. It's still left over. So you really do not need much. And this is going to be enough for this project and for the next one. So this is absolutely awesome. You just need one pack for sure for these both of these projects. So I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree uh, mesh, but I'm going to be using a method where we loop it around. And so just as comparison, this is the Dollar Tree mesh that we have, and this is five yards and 21 inches. So originally I was just going to do this where basically all together we have 21 inches right here. And uh, all of these are also five yards. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but it's five yards right there, just like this. So it should be enough to go all the way around. But because the mesh is thinner and uh, I want this to be full without putting much ribbon in between just for it to have this beautiful look. And so I decided to use two silver and two white for this wreath. Now let's do the basics. We have six sections. Each section is going to have three of these chenille wires. And here is how we're going to do it. I'm going to use one section. The first chenille is going to go in between one and two and it's going to go straight in the middle. And I'm just going to give it two little twists even one twist will do. Here's number two, and it's going to go on loop three and four. And then one on this side. Okay, so here's what I got. Here's one section. We have one in the one, two, and then two in the three, four. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way around doing the same thing. Okay, and by the way, this is from the Dollar Tree. As you see, it says Crafter Square right there. And for a dollar, you get 45 of these. Not bad, you guys. Not bad at all. All right, now I'm going to open uh, all four of these up and just stretch them out on my table So I have them in order silver white silver and white Bring them together. I'm going to put it inside one of my middle silver ones and I'm going to zip tie it to the second from the inside loop. I Just sleep better at night when I know that my wreaths are nice and secure and this first loop and the last loop that you make are the most important. So I always want to make sure that it's nice 
and tight. I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to cut the tail. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the inside first. So, here are my eight and the white ones are my 10 right here. What I decided to do is more of nine. I'm just, for some reason, I'm very worried that it's not going to be enough. So I'm going to make nine inch loops. Starting from where my mesh is right here, I'm going to make sure that the loop is going to be right here. So it's facing, like it, I can cup my hand in it, meaning it's like this. So I had just keep it like this measure out my nine inches loop it like this and go in between the silver the next inside one give it two nice twists then measure out my next nine inches this one's just a little bit more of a pain in the booty because you have to constantly untangle, not untangle, un, you know, unroll all the, you know, deco mesh, but that's okay. It's really not a big deal. Okay, next loop right here. I have my nine inches. You can do 10, but I just felt like doing nine just to make sure that we have enough. And now we're going in. And I'm going to give it two twists right here. One and two. And see, it's trying to loop out. I'm gonna loop it back in. And twist all my deco mesh, <laughs> all four of them. Okay, measure out my nine right there. Go to the next and two twists. Okay, now I'm at the beginning where I started. I'm going to finish off this loop. I'm going to go right on top of where I was. Finish off my loop right here. Make it nice and tight. Twist one, twist two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the one that's on the same section and just to the second one right here. Twist two. Right now they're all sliding right here. You can always give it a dab of uh, hot glue over here if you wanted to. But I don't usually do that just because when you open all of them up, it really is not going to matter but if you feel like that's uh, something you would like to do to make sure that it's nice and secure and won't move on you you can definitely do that let's measure out the next nine inches I'm just bringing it together and I'm going to loop it on the one that I started going down with. And then I'm going to take this tail, feed it through the second, I mean, uh, the, the fourth and third. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Here's my tail. And I'm going to zip tie it to the third loop from the inside. Isn't this nice and clean? Cut up the excess. I'm going to open up all of my little loops. And just undo them like this. I just wanna show you the difference. Here's unopened and here's opened. Do you see the difference opened? Nice, full, unopened. All right, I'm gonna continue and finish opening up all of this, and then we're going to get into decor. Okay, for the ribbon, we are going to do something different. We are going to use this buffalo check from the Dollar Tree. And instead of our usual uh, 12 inches, we're going to do 10 for this. 
Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure off my 10. And then I'm going to keep on going until I'm done with the spool of the ribbon. But I'm going to do one right now for us. I'm just going to cut duck tails right away on both of these together. Now we're going to grab this silver netted ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Also do 10 inches. You could duck tail it, you don't have to, I mean it's kind of... Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. One is going to go straight. The other one is going to go a little cross. And then this one's going to go on top. Then we are going to prepare any ornament and we obviously need 18 sets like this so what I do is I start and inst uh, instead of just putting them together and you know different people do it differently I'm going to bring it together right here there you go this way we kind of make a little bow and it's crisscrossed and it's going to be beautiful let's go to the center we're going to put it in And one of the chenille wires put the ornament feed it through and then hide both of the chenille wires in the back twist them secure them and you're all done now we just have to play around with it when we're all done and make it all pretty but look how beautiful it turns out a little bit of sparkle from the silver ribbon. Bam, how gorgeous is this? And we're just going to go around the whole wreath doing this. Okay, so this is the wreath right now, and I felt like this is more than enough. I did not want to put anything else on there. I'm just trying to basically just make everything pretty and have everything stand out, what needs to stand out, and, you know, kind of just play with it and make it look pretty. Let's get started on this wreath. We are doing the candy cane wreath today. Usually on a 14 inch or Dollar Tree wreath, I use six of these Dollar Tree deco meshes. And I don't think that I'm going to need more for this um, candy cane. I think we can definitely make it work and it's going to be nice and full. So here's the first thing that we're going to do. We need to cut up all of these pieces of mesh here. So I like to cut my mesh anywhere from six to seven inches. And what I do is I just sit there watching TV, um, cut all of these up, and then, um, and then start working on my wreath. So if you're one of those people that, that are thinking like, Nadia, this is so tedious. I'm not going to do it. This is gonna take me forever. Well, it's going to take you a little bit of watching TV and just sitting there and cutting. That's it. And then just bring it together and that'll be our next step. So for now, I'm just going to take my time, sit here, and I'm going to cut all of these up. And what I do is, let me show you real quick. As I'm cutting them, I'm just putting them one inside the other like this i have showed this on my channel before but i have this little container and this is from like 
um, probably some linens or something this little plastic box but I'll sit there watch TV cut them up and then just tie them together and they're just see one inside the other and I have purple and pink here I have some leftover red but yeah that's just this is something you just do and you just put one inside the other all right you guys I am going to cut this up and come back all right now that I have my deco mesh all cut up it's time to make my little bundles and the bundles are usually a set of three and because we are only using two styles of deco mesh it's going to be red red white and white white red and so what I do is I separate them into two different containers as you see I already made a few and I'll tell you this you guys it took me about two hours like really really slow I was actually in a zoom meeting doing these and I was just sitting there and doing them like a slow pace it took me two hours to bring all the bundles together and cut these little guys up all right so let's see how we bring them together you're going to need chenille wires some people cut them in half some people cut them in three I cut them in three I don't think it's a big deal um, I think it's enough wire to bring it together and then put it on your wreath because what do you do on your wreath when it's too long I'm just going to put it on one of the wires I'm not gonna you know if you're going to be putting them on both wires then yeah I would use half but if you're just going to be using this thin little wire for it then it doesn't make sense to have a really really long wire all right so here's how I do I usually grab one two three of each color one two three and then whoop, and then I make two white one red and then two red and one white and then I just make them and I just let it curl up naturally just let it curl up and I'll throw my scissors on top put it just a little bit to the side and then I'm going to do the white one put it across like this and then the last one And I like to have a nice crisscross with the contrasting color in the middle. And now I'm just going to bring it together. And really just a tight little squeeze right there. And that's it. That's all you do. And this is plenty to put on your wreath. Because you're just going to put it on and twist it. So that goes in the red. Then let me make my white. All right, we are going to be putting our little bundles on the second and third so on the two middle rows I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to start with the inside row and I'm just going to be going in and out using my two different bundles twisting them in the back that's all I'm doing right now is just twisting them and so since I started with white, white, red, on um, this part I'm going to start with red, red, white. All right, I did eight in this one section. So four on one row, four in another, and it looks pretty solid. And I'll just continue going all the way around having four on each little section obviously here it's going to be a little bit more this section is a little wider but we will see all right you guys this is where we are so far so we have going towards okay okay you guys so this is what we have so far look how thick this is 
very thick and beautiful okay so we've been going eight per section so four per each little row right here because we're only using the uh, two inner rows here i only have three in in here in this little groove in the uh, center or the one that's closer to the center and here i have six because i'm kind of coming to the end of my little bundles i'm going to start from this end and go this way because it could just squeeze in here and it'll be okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do eight here and then basically the remaining in this section let's get going okay you guys i finished up what i had in this section right here and it does look so full and you guys this thing is humongous absolutely humongous now i'm just going to trim it up to make sure there's nothing hanging you know like loose little threads like this and then uh, we are going to decorate it a little bit all right now it's time to warm up your glue guns we are going to make a little centerpiece right here for our little mesh candy cane I'm going to just grab a piece of felt and this one I believe is from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to make a circle just fold it in four and made a circle oh, <laughs> that doesn't look like a circle <laughs> all right all right I think I could have done better just freehand yeah all right that'll work <laughs> all righty now i'm grabbing my grow grain ribbon from the dollar tree which i absolutely love and i'm going to measure of eight inches and i'm going to just go back and forth so i'm going to make kind of like little petals with these um i don't know how many i'm going to use so to start off i'll maybe do six we're going to make kind of little petals so we're going to bring our little ribbon together and this part needs to be facing inside so do you see what I mean the petal is inside and there's your outside now I'm going to just start hot gluing them onto my felt I'm just hot gluing it straight onto my deco mesh it'll hold it and then this I'm thinking somewhere around there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put hot glue on top and hot glue it to the the bottom of my red piece of felt just making sure everything is nice and secure give it extra hot glue you know this is Dollar Tree flowers let's not kid ourselves here all right i think it's time to display this baby For this wreath, I'm going to be using two microfiber pads from the Dollar Tree and I'm going right in between the stitch lines to cut each microfiber pad into four sections. Now I'm using some hot glue attaching strips to the wreath and just wrapping them all the way around. Now I'm grabbing this pick and I'm just grabbing the greenery from it and hot gluing it in the top center of the wreath. I love the greenery because it's already 
painted white a little bit and it looks frosty. Next, let's do the bow. I'm going to start by approximating how big I want my bow and then just cutting that ribbon down. And I'm using this burlap ribbon with lace over it and I'm grabbing some polka dot grow grain ribbon and hot gluing it right on top of the lace, securing each end to the back of the burlap. Now I'm just making my simple bow, bringing it together with a piece of floral wire in the middle and hot gluing it to the top center of the wreath. Using another pick from the Dollar Tree, I'm just grabbing the berries, then cutting two little strips to put on top of the greenery and a small piece of berries to hot glue in the middle of the bow. For this wreath, I'm using the wood blend wreath from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it one coat of Rust-Oleum chalked paint. Next, I'm grabbing 10 pine cones and I will give them a coat of white chalked paint. Now that my pine cones are nice and dry and they have a good white base, I'm going in with a pretty pink and I'm giving all the pine cones a good coat of that beautiful pink paint. Next, I'm grabbing some Mod Podge and I'm going to put glitter right on top of those pine cones. They will give such an elegant and beautiful addition to my wreath. For this wreath, I will also be using these mini ornaments, then the silver and white iridescent vase fillers, a few of these star vase fillers from the 4th of July, and then I'm going to be using the fern greenery as my base. I'm going to decorate three-fourths of my wreath, leaving one-fourth empty just as it is. So that's why I'm starting with my fern so I can see the edges of where I'm going to be working. Then I'm just grabbing all this greenery that I had left over from previous projects and just hot gluing it all around the section that I'm working on. Next I'm grabbing the mini silver ornaments and I'm just popping off the little tops from them and then just hot gluing them all around the wreath. You want to start with those because those are your bigger pieces before we get into the smaller one. Next I'm using the stars because those are also quite big comparing to the other pieces. Then I'm just working on my white iridescent and silver vase fillers. Now for the pine cones, I'm just balancing everything out and trying to spread them out throughout the wreath. And if there was any spots open, I went back and filled in with the mini little vase fillers. To hang my wreath, I'm grabbing a piece of ribbon I had on hand, feeding it through the vines in the back of the wreath, making a little knot, and I'm ready to hang my wreath. For this super easy wreath, I'm going to use this scarf that I found at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to actually use two of them. And the first thing I did was cut my foam wreath so I can feed the scarf through. And then I'm just going to undo the edges without cutting. I just unstitched it so I don't waste any of the scarf and I'm just feeding it onto my wreath. To bring my wreath back together, I did try to use some hot glue, but that was a definite fail because it just melted the foam. So I just did a few layers of this clear packing tape and it worked absolutely fine. For the bow, I will be using this buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I want a bigger tail on here. So I just measured my tail. Then I'm going to do four loops, meaning two loops on each side of my bow and bring it together with a piece of floral wire. To prevent fraying and to make sure my tail is nice and pretty, I'm going to fold the edge over about a quarter of an inch, put some hot glue right there, and then fold my tail into a little triangle. And then I'm going to pinch the edge and the triangle to make sure it's nice and crisp. Next, I'm hot gluing the bow straight onto the wreath form. You can also just use a string and tie it on. For the bow tails, we are going to be using the ribbon method. All I'm doing is folding the ribbon under and pinching it in the back so you have a nice smooth loop in the front. And as you can see, I'm going to do it twice for each one of the tails. As you can see here, I tried a red pom-pom uh, on here and I just did not like the way it looked. So I cut it off and I grabbed three cotton balls and hot glued them to the center of the ribbon. And oh my goodness, it made 
all the difference in the world. To hang this wreath, I'm just grabbing a piece of ribbon I had on hand, and it was a perfect red match, and I'm just cutting it off and pinning both of the ends together and straight onto the foam wreath. For this wreath, we are going to be using six rolls of this decorative mesh and we're going to cut the mesh into 14 inch strips. You are going to have seven per roll. To cover the green foam, I'm using a roll of grow grain ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And if you go slow and hot glue throughout the way, one roll will be enough. Now I'm just taking each one of the strips, folding them in half and tying them on the side of the wreath. That's it, I'm not even double tying. Because of the type of mesh this is, it's not going to slide and it's going to stay pretty secure. Now I'm going to go all the way around the wreath using up all my strips. For decor, I'm using these ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I wanted to do is cover those little holes on top. So I'm just using a hot glue gun and using a finger protector, I'm just smoothing the hot glue over the ornament. Next, I'm painting both of the ornaments in a Craft Smart acrylic paint called Ocean Breeze. I'm just giving both of the ornaments one coat. I'm giving my ornaments a layer of Mod Podge and then using this gorgeous chunky glitter and it's called snowy surprise i got it at walmart and i'm going to give it a nice coat on top of these trees i wanted the glitter to look like snow on top of the trees just so you guys can see the difference here's a tree with glitter and here's one without glitter what do you think not a big glitter person myself but this looks absolutely stunning let me know what you think now i'm just glittering up the second tree and i'm going to let both of the trees dry for an hour next i'm grabbing this cute little deer that i got for dollar 98 at walmart and i'm going to remove the top little tag that was on top of the deer's head and i'm sorry i did it kind of off screen but i just removed it to make sure it's nice and smooth and then i'm just hot gluing everything where i feel like it needs to go so i put one tree a little higher one a little lower and then bambi kind of went to the side and i think this wreath turned out absolutely beautiful and i have it hanging in my living room right now to hang my wreath i'm just adding a piece of transparent ribbon to the top of my wreath For this easy wreath, we are just using some tinsel from the Dollar Tree and wrapping it around our foam wreath form. After we're done wrapping it around, we are going to decorate with a silver Jingle Bell ornament from the Dollar Tree. At this point, you can attach the ornament as is, but that blob of hot glue in the front really bothered me. So I'm grabbing some pine cone potpourri and I'm going to grab a tiny little pine cone and then just cut the end of it and hot glue it as the third little pine cone in that little bundle. I also added a bigger pine cone on the other side of the ornament, kind of to balance everything out. To hang my ornament, I'm just very carefully putting a pin through the ribbon, inserting it into the wreath, and covering up with the tinsel. We are going to start by doing the hat. And what I want to do is I want to make this part right here a little smaller. And I'm going to be using this tongue depressor as my little mark, just m making the mark where to bend. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab these tongue depressors and we're basically going to build up a hat. I just want it to be stronger. It's not necessary because we are going to put felt over it, but I just want that extra strength on it. And I'm going to start with this bottom one. I'm 
where the sticks are, that's going to be my front, and where the wire part is, this is going to be my back. So just keep in mind when you're positioning them to see which way you want your snowman to go. The first thing I'm going to do is cover this area. And this area is basically the width of a tongue depressor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of going right along the edge, I'm going to go in just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I'm just using a blade and I'm just running a blade through. That's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give just a little bit of hot glue right there on the edges so I can pick it up. So what I'm doing is I'm literally just bringing the ends in, kind of folding them in, kind of like this is folded. Just bring them, just fold them in and just bring them over. See how I have these bent, like bent right here. I'm going to bring them over. And if you have anything sticking out, this is why you just use your little tongue depressor. A little bit of glue. And then I'm using my tongue depressor to push it in. And I'm going to do the same thing to the side. See, now we have nice and smooth edges. As you can see, it's sticking out right here a little bit, but don't worry, we're, we're going to have the mesh coming over here. And then this part is going to be covered by the second part, and then we're going to have a ribbon right here to m smooth it out. And I'm going to give it just a little bit more so I can fold over. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hot glue the edges right here. And so I'm going to hot glue right here. I'm going to need these deco mesh rolls from the Dollar Tree along with some of these fuzzy sticks or whatever you want to call them, chenille wires. I usually call them chenille wires. And uh, these particular ones are from Michael's. I just had white ones from there. But Dollar Tree also has these. So I'm just going to take a few of these and cut them in three. So we are using the bubble method. So I'm going to start from the middle and then I'm going to make my way around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring some mesh together. Grab our chenille wire. And I'm going to twist it right at the crossing right here so it's nice and secure. Basically, we're going to put as many bubbles as we can so until we don't see the wreath anymore. And we are going to be actually making really small loops here just because this is a snowman. This is not supposed to be super big. I'm going to be using four inch loops and I always loop up. So the middle is up and we're going to measure from where our chenille wire is to where I'm grabbing one, two, three, four inches, grabbing it, bringing it in, grabbing another chenille wire, and I'm going to tie around both of these rings. Starting where our attachment is, we're going to measure four inches loop in grab a chenille wire do the first twist on the dec deco mesh and then bring the loop in and tie right there and as you can see the wreath is already disappearing i just made three loops it's already disappearing And well, once you started, make sure that your snowman hat, that this is the back where it needs to be and that you're working from the front. Okay, we're going to measure four inches. Grab it, loop it, grab a chenille wire. Do the first twist on the deco mesh. All right, I'm going to finish this first section 
and then come back. I finished one section and I really packed it in really, really tightly. So I made 24 inch loops. You could probably get away with 15, but I wanted this to be really full. So yeah, and look at this. You can't see the wire at all. And I'm just going to continue going around using the same thing, just four inches. Bring my little chenille, twist it, and then straight onto the wreath form. Starting a new roll, I just attached right here, the little tail right there, I'm gonna push inside. Let me just push it back. So I'm just starting right there. And I'm going to measure off four inches tie it first on the deco mesh, make my little loop, and then tie it to the actual wreath. Okay, now we come to this part and don't forget that this part is pretty much covered meaning the second ring is kind of attached right here no worries we are going to attach to the inner ring so I have my first one and just continue working like we were working okay because it's hard to see your four inches with the hat um, I measured that the hat is pretty much four inches so that is how I'm going to measure I'll just basically be measuring against the hat the wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy standing up close by the Christmas tree glimmering light I am right where I want to be all right now it's time to work on this cute little hat I'm grabbing some of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree I'm just going to hot glue it to the back okay now that I have that glued I have a piece of greenery from one of the Christmas bushels from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just hot glue it right there on that corner right there so it's sticking out of the hat and then I'm going to cut another piece now I'm grabbing a tie this is a garland tie from the Dollar Tree because I do want some greenery there you like to be here too Now I have some berries. These are from one of the Dollar Tree uh, picks. Drinking up wine by the fire. And then I want to put a pine cone in, in the middle. And these are the Dollar Tree pine cones. And I'll just do this. But you know what? I think I want to frost it up. Some kind of love, my friend. I'll pray you there you go. Just like that. Do you like to be okay, for the little arms, I got some sticks here. And I'm just going to cut down to see what would look best on here. It's just you and me tonight. I'll spend all these And I'm actually going to follow exactly what they have here. And then two little ones right here, maybe. using this square wreath form that I found at the Dollar Tree and I wish I can find more because these are so unique and as you see this is the little tag that came with it 
and what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using these burlap ribbon uh, to wrap around the wreath and then to decorate I am going to be using this gold and the green burlap from the Dollar Tree I will also be using these gorgeous picks that I got at the Dollar Tree this year and these that I got from the Dollar Tree last year look how pretty these are um, some of them are like it's damaged just a tiny bit over here but hey all you have to do is turn it around and nobody can see but yeah those are so super cute um, and if I feel like it's not full enough when I actually start decorating I always have these on hand you guys these are always good to have these wired garland ties to buff up anything you're doing for Christmas and especially with the Christmas trees that the Dollar Tree has. I have my little finger covering and these are from the Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the center here and I'm just going to kind of cross over because I want it to go on an angle and just give it a dab of hot glue right there just so it holds it over here in the middle I want the bottom of this part and the top of this part to overlap that way we have a nice thick layer there we go now the corners here are a little tricky but you know what nothing we can handle right you guys Okay, a little bit of an angle here. Okay, so the way I do my corner is I will, let me just pull it up. I, I will go to the corner and I will loop it back. So there's my loop right around the corner. And I'm going to give it just a tab of hot glue right here, just so it holds. And now I'm taking and I'm folding a little bit of this inside ribbon underneath here because what I want to do is I want to give it a nice secure corner right here. And I'm bringing my other edge straight up to the corner. And this is where we're going to go up again. Here we have another corner going on. My last loop, I'm looping it over here in the corner, bringing it back and covering that up. And over here where it overlaps, I'm going to give a little dab of hot glue. Just, I mean, you guys, dab, 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 like tiny, tiny, tiny. Because I don't want too much of the hot glue going through and I'm just using kind of just to bring it together and hold it and I'm going to take a little bit of this and push it in so I can squeeze it in a little bit so that it doesn't look too crunched up and I'm going to go over and cover this area and then this area that's all wrinkly we're gonna cover with this straighten that out a little bit and then we move on so with this ending we're just going to start a new one and all I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap make sure it's not gonna show I even cut it down just a tiny bit now it's almost nice and dry now if I would have finished a little bit earlier like on the front I would have actually came back to the back and cut that piece off because I'd rather cut a piece off than have this in the front somewhere okay we are ready to continue and I will be doing the same thing just moving along 
overlapping really, oops, sorry about that, you guys. Overlapping really nicely. And I'm just overlapping by half, half of the ribbon. That way you get double layer. I've been working so much lately. I can barely find the time to sleep. Yeah, I spend my time running around, keeping people pleased. But this is my favorite holiday. It's a chance to Okay, you guys, so I'm coming to the end and I have a little piece left. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm not going to go over here because I'm going to have a bow in this corner anyway. And I'm just going to just make sure that this part is covered. And yes, this part is going to go in the front, but there will be greenery here. So that part will be covered also. Okay, this wreath looks really clean, very beautiful, and we are going to work on this corner right here. And the way I'm going to do it is you can either hang it like this, or you could hang it like a in a diamond shape. So I'll kind of be working with a diamond shape, and then we see what we will do. The first thing I want to do is I want to do the greenery and see if I need to add any. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to separate the little greenery here and I'm going to put this gold in between so to make it look like it was all one piece. You know what, I feel like this greenery is not really matching to this. Both of these are Dollar Tree pieces. Are they different greenery pieces? Look at this one, this one's not bad. So there we go, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and wrap it around and I'm going to bend about an inch of this pick. Okay, I like that. So I did the same thing to the second one as I did to the first one. I got the wired garland, wrapped it around and I'm just going to hot glue it in place. All right, let's get started on the bow. So here is the idea. It's to use this gold one and the green one because we have gold and we have green. So we have gold and we have green because otherwise the gold is not going to stand out that much this way, see? And then I thought it's just a little dark. Just the whole project seems a little bit dark and not enough white. So I thought on top of that to bring in some white. I don't know how much we have left here. Oh, we don't have a lot left. To bring in some of this white. When I do bows like this, what I like to do is because the endings are so kind of rugged so here's what i'm going to do the first thing i'm going to do is bring it together hold it in place there you go and i'm going to fold it and this time i'm going to do two dabs on the sides so i got 12 about 24 inches is my bow Okay, so now that I have it nice and secured, I'm just going to pull it down. And this, actually, this bow is going to be 24 inches. So if you're doing the same ribbon um, or a similar ribbon, you're going to need about 24 inches for this particular bow. And I just went with that because that's how much, how long my white ribbon was I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to fold it in half and do some hot gluing over here let's find our center after I found my center I'm going to make a simple bow going one way 
and going the other way. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm gonna play those carols that you love. We'll be singing all the night. Here's how I bring these together usually. I fold it in half, and then one down and two down. And that is how I usually bring them together. I'm using a floral wire for this bow today. Isn't this how it is supposed to be? Making a Christmas memory. Don't make make it too tight. That way you can adjust it if you want. And there you go, you guys. I think this bow turned out absolutely cute. I feel like I want more greenery here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece, I'm going to cut it in half. These wire cutters are not impressing me over here. My husband just got me a new pair, I need to find them. Okay, so what I wanna do is I just wanna give more greenery over here to cover this area up. Right there, see? There you go, I feel a lot better about that. And then when I put this on, it's gonna look good. Okay, that's a little better. See, sometimes you just, as you're working, you just see something here, something there, need to improve here, need to improve there, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay, to finish up this bow, obviously, I'm not gonna leave the wire right there. I'm going to take another piece of this grow grain ribbon that I absolutely love. I'm a huge fan of my grow grain ribbon. Three inches of the grow grain ribbon, two to three inches depends on how thick your ribbon is on your bow. I just feel like using grow grain ribbon in my projects. I, it just it makes it look so um, so much more expensive. Grow grain ribbon is not cheap, and um, it's not expensive either. It's not like you know it's covered in gold pieces or whatever. But still, it's just such an elegant and beautiful ribbon. I love using it. All right, let's see what we have here. I'm going to poof these guys up. And I'm, oh yes, oh yes, I am very, very happy about that. Thank you so much for joining me on my first Wreath Wednesday. If you like this idea of doing wreaths with me every Wednesday, let me know down below and what types of wreaths would you like to see? Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you sending you warm hugs and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. I'm going to get started with two of these green wreaths from the Dollar Tree and I'm using two because they are a little bit on the sparse side. Oh gosh, I guess this is the back of it. You could definitely just see all the wiring. We are going to turn that upside down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one up and make it flat basically. So then I can put the second one right on top and obviously because this one is really really sparse you could <laughs> basically see the skeleton kind of on this one that's definitely going to be my bottom one baby this year is just gonna be you and me hang by the fire and chill isn't this how it's supposed to be making our christmas memories oh Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I have three pieces left of this wired garland. This one seems a little bit shorter, but I'm going to just fold this in half. 
and I think I'm going to get the Dollar Tree actual garland because this is, I just feel like it's not going to be enough. I've been wrapping presents for you. I've been hanging marbles in the tree. And I've lit my house with Christmas lights. So you should come back home to me. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm gonna play those carols. Okay, you guys, I think it's down to this. I am grabbing the garland because it's just not enough and I'm just going by the fold of the garland just how it came um, about seven to ten inches and I just want to fill it in there's really there's holes so you want you know this garland will actually be really nice because it's fluffy and full okay that's much better I feel like, look at this, this is already starting to look better than this. And I just want to make sure I have enough. So I'm just going to jump throughout the areas. to work on the little houses look at these cute little ornaments I found at the Dollar Tree and because they have these little tops the first thing I'm going to do is remove all these tops and let me just work on one so you see what I'm going to do here then I'm going to grab some paint any paint will do acrylic I'm just using chalk paint because it'll dry faster. And then we're going to bring glitter in. Now, one of the reasons that's okay to do, because look at all of this glitter going on over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make this little part look like a chimney. And the reason I'm grabbing white is because uh, we want to make it look like there's snow on it. And so I'm just going to go around like this really quickly, not a big deal. Bring on the glitter. When this dries, what, what is going to make it look like a chimney is I'm going to grab a piece of cotton and I'm going to, I don't know how I'm exactly going to do this. Just I'm grabbing a piece of cotton here. I'm gonna fold it in half like this. I don't know how big I want it. And then I'm going to shove this little piece of cotton in the chimney and it's going to look like smoke how cute is that you guys I think I do want it longer though I don't like the short one too much I think oh my goodness you guys this is just too cute look at that we have a house and we have a little chimney with smoke coming out how adorable is that all right, so I'm going to finish up all of these and come back. These little houses are cracking me up. Just take a look. So sweet and cute. I am just ecstatic. Okay, so now let's actually bring things together. I have the wreath right here. And you have a few options here. You could do these Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree and these are the green ones and then the white ones. I use these as, as props all the time and I tried putting these on and it just does not work because I just feel like these are clashing in their own way and then the white ones are kind of clashing too. They're pretty but you need a lot of them to work and I just have like the really tall ones and the short ones. So what you could do if you have these is kind of do, just do the houses right here. But because I'm doing the full wreath, I'm going to do something else. I have these florals from the Dollar Tree. And these are so easy to come off. You just pop them off and look at these. They look like little Christmas trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, because I feel like they're a little too long for the houses. I mean, some of them could be taller like that, but in most cases, I'm going to remove this bottom petal right there. And I'm going to have this sweet little Christmas tree and it works really well with the little house. The one 
wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy. Standing up close by the Christmas tree, glimmering light, I am right where I wanna be. I'll be home for a couple of days, wander around with you. You and me in the cold, thought it'd never be true. Wherever I go, I got you. Oh, I have stopped running. Okay, it looks like I have one little house left over. I didn't want it to be too crowded either. So I'm just going to continue. But um, I am going to hot glue the little homes. Some kind of love, my friend. Pray it will never end. Do you like to be here too? It's Christmas. And outside snow's glistening. It's just you and these trees are not the easiest because they they are bare. So I try to find the side where it's more flat, kind of like this, so I have room to put the glue in. And just start sticking them everywhere. At the door, you said I wish this will never be over, darling. It's time for your present. Come over here now. It is time to get out in the snow. Okay, at this point, I feel like I have plenty of gold. Now I'm going to step back and start adding some cotton. And this we're just going to stick underneath the homes and I'm just going to unwrap it a little bit, divide it in half and just kind of fluff the half out, kind of round the edges and I'm just going to put it underneath the home. And these have been so popular, Martha Stewart. I mean, just so many people have been doing these homes. And so I am not sure who it was, but one of my beautiful subscribers has um, asked me to do this wreath. So I am so glad she did because I'm having a blast. And uh, you know what? I'm going to hot glue it on here because I feel like it's kind of hanging in the air. So. That's just more secure. Are you guys starting to see it now? The cotton's going underneath the houses. It's starting to look up. Oh, it's just starting to look so cute. So today I'm using this tiny little 8 inch wreath comparing to the 14 inch wreath that we usually use. Uh, this is going to be for a sweet little girl and I'm very excited to do this. Here is the little Minnie Mouse that I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to be using this ornament from the Dollar Tree. Everything's from the Dollar Tree including my little Minnie Mouse. Then I'm just going to be using three rolls. Two white, one pink. And then you need some sort of a either measuring mat. This is not really, really necessary. And some chenille uh, wires. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these in half. Now, usually when I'm making like the curly wreath, I cut these in three. But today we're going to cut in two just because of, of when we're bringing the deco mesh together. It it is more comfortable to be using it um, when it's in half. Okay, so we got that. And then let's start on this Minnie Mouse. I just wanna open it and, and see how I can work with it. And I'm really hoping this is going to work. All right, so this part is rubber, just like I thought. And this part is really, really glued on. So it looks like I might be using my cutters right here. Oh, this is not bad, you guys. Not bad at all, just using these guys. And I think I'm just going to cut them in. 
and what I'm trying to do is trying to remove this sharpener away from the Minnie Mouse so please please use caution because you are just jamming this in here so let's see here I'm wondering if using some kind of a little knife would be a little better oh this seems to be a little better All right, and I have my intact Minnie Mouse right here that is going to go right on the snowflake. Okay, so let's just finish up the ornament so that way we have it ready at the end. Before I put my little Minnie Mouse on top of my snowflake, I am going to grab another piece of chenille and I'm going to hot glue it in the middle right here. Let me make sure I have my middle. I'm going to use this chenille piece to uh, attach to my little wreath a little later and so on top of it I'm just going to twist it so it stays in place while it's drying and then on top of it I'm going to put my little mini mouse I'm completely in love with this sweet little mini mouse uh, you are going to need three rolls of deco mesh from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using two whites and one pink. I want this to look more, more bright and pretty. And I wish the pink was a little bit lighter, but that's the only one the Dollar Tree had. So we are going to do one of the easiest wreaths you can possibly do. And that is the one where you just roll out. You put one, and then you roll out a second one, which is my pink. And then on top of that, you are going to roll another white. If you are starting out and working with deco mesh, this is the wreath for you, or this style of wreath. And so I'm going to start by just securing one. I usually use zip ties for this, usually, because I just feel like it can have a nice, secure, um, you know, tail with this. But we are just going to be using this chenille wire. And now I'm going to attach it to this little crossing right here so that it stays in place. And I really want to make sure it's secure. And if you want to bring this back in, make sure it's not going to go anywhere. You could definitely just wrap it around again and secure it that way. So this is the part where you decide how big you want your loops to be. Don't forget this is an 8 inch wreath, so you don't need them to be that big. Okay, so I think, I don't think I need to have them more than 6 inches. I just... Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, another six inches. Gather, bring it together. And tie it in the back in the middle row. done with one section if you look in the back I know I'll make it all pretty later there's three sections in this wreath I'm only done with one and I did eight loops six inches each and I still have enough to do the rest of it if you are going to use this technique on a 14 inch wreath you are going to need six of these because uh, three of these are going to be enough for half of the 14 inch uh, wreath that is from the Dollar Tree and I have done th those before um, 
I'll insert one of my previous videos where I use this technique. But um, yeah, we will continue and I'll just finish up the work and then we'll start opening them up. And that's the fun part. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I don't like a messy back, especially, you know, if it gets put on like a glass door or something. So what I'm doing is, because these tails are long enough, I'm kind of twisting them, almost like braiding, like French braiding, and I'm just tagging one on top of the other, and anything sharp goes back, and look how smooth this is. Instead of all this mess, it looks nice, clean, and I'm just twisting them together. See? Look at that. Nice, clean little line. Okay, so you could ideally, if you wanted to leave it at that, and then add your snowflake on top, and it's going to look actually pretty sweet. But I do like to open mine up. That's the whole point of doing this technique. And all I'm doing is unraveling and bring that pink out in the middle. Now you can choose to either do the pink on the side, pink here. I'm just actually going to keep the pink in the middle of my two white um, pieces just because it's going to be a beautiful balance. So one white is going to one side and the other white is going to the other side and the pink is going to be in the middle and especially that this wreath is so small um, it's going to look pretty all right I fluffed it out and we have the white in the center then pink and then white on the outside and this turned out so super cute now i'm going to get my centerpiece and as you remember we attached the chenille wire on first and that's because we're just going to feed it through here let's turn this upside down and i'm just going to attach it to probably this inner one i don't want it to be too tight either and then just attach it around that wire and then the same thing on the other side see and it looks nice and clean here switch it over all right you could definitely leave this wreath as it is I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to grab these pom-poms I'm going to start with these medium size pom-poms and spread them throughout the wreath and because I know that's not enough I am going to make take the really really tiny ones because there's quite a bit of those and then very carefully don't hurt yourself there just hot glue these in various places Okay, I feel like I have enough of the white little pom-poms on here. And the reason I did this is because the bow on the mini has little polka dots. And it just brought the whole wreath together. And I do think it looks super, super cute. What do you guys think? Now it is time to get out in the snow. Lighting a light with you. Choirs will sing. Well, that is it for today's wreath. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me. Leah wanted to stop by and say hello. If you are new to my channel and love Dollar Tree DIYs, trash to treasure sometimes, and Dollar Tree hauls, this may be the channel for you. Please like, subscribe, and hit the thumbs up button. And we will see you in our next video. Say bye. No, 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 no. No pause. No pause. Come on, baby. Say bye. Bye. He's so sweet for cooperating, aren't you? Mm.